file open let's choose my flower open boom that works now i can do the same again choose the cube and that works again yo what is up guillaume here today i will continue working on the simple image processor i will add the possibility to choose whatever image you want using a menu and also i will show you a new way of handling events in Physic. let's get to it all right now we're in the code where we left the last time so just hit a five to test it here we are we are able to display an image within a window and the window open that's a zero zero coordinates okay quickly we're going to change the, the the way the window opens with two flags first is pb window screen centered i'm sure you guess what it does pretty easy and then the second one is pb window minimize gadget okay so just quickly the screen centered one will open the window right in the middle of the screen and the minimize gadget one will add the possibility to minimize the window in the taskbar just test exactly see the window appears just exactly in the center of the screen the center of the window being the same as the center of the screen and then there is this minimize button here to minimize the application in the task bar we'll change the icon in a later video but we can do that okay i want to find a way to let the user choose which image he wants so just like in an application like pure basic you have the file menu open when you want to open a new file we are going to do exactly the same for our application so i'm going to add a menu create menu menu zero for the window id zero window ID here is returning the unique ID which identifies the window in the operating system so it's not exactly the same as the zero here you get you you call window ID of zero to get the unique ID of the window within the OS so I'm creating a menu now I'm adding so that's the empty menu bar what I need to add is one title so menu title okay uh, and just so let's create the file file menu within this file menu i want to add two menu items one is open okay so here i need to give an id because this id the zero here is the one that is going to be raised uh, when the menu item is clicked so that's the way I have to know that it's the, the, the open menu item that is clicked and not the other one. So menu item zero, let's make it open with an ellipsis and that's it. Yes, just like that. I will add also a menu bar, which is a separator. See, once again, in the file here, the horizontal lines are separators. So between the open and the quit, there is many, there are many, but there is at least one separator. So that's the menu bar and then another menu item. This is the one this time. And let's call it quit without ellipsis. Okay, now let's remove the loading of the image. We don't need that anymore. We don't want to load a fixed image. We want to choose it. And here, image ID, so the image with the ID 0 does not exist because we have not loaded it. So we want to put back 0 to tell the image gadget to display no image. Okay, quick try. F5, here we are. There is a file menu. Open, quit. Of course, when I click open or when I click quit, nothing happens. It is because we haven't bound anything to those items. So here, this code is one of the ways to handle events. 
you get the event and then you check whatever it is. There is another way, it's to bind a function or procedures to an event. To do that, you just write bind event, you bind which event you want to bind, so to, to bind, sorry. So here I want to bind a menu event and then what procedure you want to call on menu event. Okay. So whenever you we, we're gonna have the PB event menu event, uh, we'll call or the pure basic will call the on menu event procedure. Of course, I need to declare this procedure. So procedure uh, on menu event, no parameters, and within this procedure, we want to get. So we are going to call menu item a new variable called menu item, in which we will get the uh, event menu. So event menu returns the menu item which triggered the event. So if I click on open, it will return zero. If I click on one, on, sorry, on quit, it will return one. Now I can do select menu item. So select is going to do a switch depending on the value of menu item. And select. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. Select menu item. So two cases. So each case. So we have the case zero and we have the case one. In the case zero, so far we are want to, it's open, so we want to open a file requester. So just to test, we are not going to do that right now. We are just going to test this with a message requester. Okay. Test, let's say menu okay maybe you can do menu item and add the uh, value of the menu item it's a little bit uh, too much but okay and case one in case we do a quit uh, just terminate with the command end that will terminate the program Okay, on menu event is calling here on menu event. So let's try this. Running file. If I click open, I'll get a message box menu item zero. Test. Okay. If I click quit, it terminates the program. Perfect. Now we want to actually open uh, the open file requester and look for a file. Okay, so to do so, uh, we need to declare a new procedure. Okay, open image. And in this procedure, I will do three things. First one is declaring a variable file dollar, or we can call it file path. Okay, dollar. This dollar sign at the end of a variable name means it's a string. Equals open file requester, and then you have many parameters. So the title of the window. Um, choose an image. Okay. Then the default file. Uh, we don't have any default file that we want to load, so nothing. Then the pattern, ah, that's a complex one. So the pattern represent, uh, represents the filters that you want to see in the file requester. Let's say I do control O here to open a pure basic file. You see the filters is the list of these guys. So there is a title for the filter and then the actual files that you want to load. All the, the text in the parentheses, all the text that is displayed here is the title. And then I guess that the uh, filter corresponds to uh, whatever there is between those parentheses, but you have to put it specifically. 
So it's a, st a string separated by pipes. So first is the text, the title of the filter. So we want to open image files. And we know uh, since the last episode that we can open BMP files, ICO files, as well as JPEG because we added the JPEG image decoder. So JPEG, BMP, and ICO. That's the title of my filter and I put a pipe and then I, I put really the filter itself separated by semicolons. So star.jpg, I can just copy here, see, copy paste and replace the commas by semicolons. I can add a pipe again and then the next one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end the line here and switch to a new line so it's more readable. And then the next one is all files. There's always an all file filter because you never know, you, you need to, to, to load maybe a JPEG that is spelled differently, that has no extensions or whatever. So a pipe, a pipe, and start at star, okay. And then the last non-optional flag is the pattern position at which, which pattern is used by default. The first one in a zero based index it's zero okay now in my file path i can test that i could test that message requester for example with nothing or just test and the file path here dollar okay f5 that will not work that will not work because i did not call i kept my message requester here Instead, I want to call my open image procedure. Now we can test. File, open. Okay, here's my image request. Oh, sorry, open file requester with my two filters, all files. You can see the other file showing up. So, and I can select the cube.jpg and I'll get my message box with the whole path of my file. Perfect. Two more things to do here. I will just comment out this message requester. Now I want to load the image. Load image, image zero, file name. We already have the file path. And that is it. I'm loading inside the zero image. I'm loading the image contained in the file. And finally, I need to call state gadget state. Uh, gadget is the gadget zero, and the state is the actual image ID of zero. So let me explain this. Load image function loads the content of the file, which is an image, within memory and gives us the ID of zero. Okay, so we have in pure basic. In basic, we have the ID zero that corresponds to the image we just loaded. But the image won't display anything unless you set it within the gadget to display it. So that's how we do it, set gadget state. And it's a common uh, function, the set gadget state. For an image gadget, the state is the actual image ID uh, of the image. So this should work let's try that file open let's choose my flower open boom that works now i can do the same again choose the cube and that works again we are able to choose any image file we want perfect a little bit more on this episode is with the fact that we are going to add shortcuts to our uh, menu. Why is that? Look at that. File, open. You see there is an icon, but there is also a shortcut. When you, when you hit Ctrl O, it will do the same as choosing the menu item. To add a shortcut, what do you type? Guess, add keyboard shortcut. Exactly. Window ID, still zero. We only have one window. The key, so it's a combination of shortcut keys, 
that constant start with shortcut. So I want to add the control shortcut, combine with the pipe sign with the O letter, the O shortcut, like this, okay? And what do I raise? Which menu item does it match? It matches the zero menu item, uh, which is the open. We can, no, it's like this. I can just copy and paste this to get the one and control Q to quit. Okay, but look in the file menu, it's written here control O. So will it do that? automatically let's try file no there is nothing written here nothing there okay so we need to do it by hand it's easy you just need to add sorry it's a constant so pound sign tab dollar which is the character the tabulation character as a constant and then whatever you want here I can say control plus O and do the same for the control plus U. Okay, quick try once again. File that works. I have my shortcuts written right here. What I also want to do, the usual stuff we have in Windows application, is look when I there is the file here and I hit the alt when I hit the alt key I can navigate within the menu with my uh, keyboard with my arrows and then you see the O is underlined and the Q as well and all the so those are shortcuts if I hit the Q I won't do that but if I hit the O key it just does exactly as if I had it control O so to do that uh, in pure basic you just need to add an ampersand right between before uh, on the letter sorry you want to have underlined and that is it file alt key see open and quit o and q if i hit q it will close even if i was on the open menu item once again running file i have my control o will this work control o it does work perfectly it does not work because it crashed why is that it's because we haven't managed the fact that no image was returned and we need to do so so let's say if file path dollar uh, different from empty string then we do load the image okay so let's try this f5 alt key c open so o key get the open alt key file q quit that works Perfect, and that is the end of our second episode. All right, that's gonna be it for today's video. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next episode.